Thanks for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, and check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff. Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to discuss the anatomy of the carpal tunnel. And we're not going to go into the pathology here of it, but we really just want to understand what's in the carpal tunnel. What is it? What makes it up? And what goes through it? Because only once we understand that can we start to talk about the pathology. So in this picture right here, what they've done is they've taken a cross section basically right through the wrist. Um, right here you actually see the carpal bones. The red line represents the, where they took the cross section. It's pretty much splitting the eight carpals right in half. Remember there's eight carpal bones, two rows of four. There's a proximal row of four and a distal row of four. And it turns out that there's a piece of tissue called the transverse carpal ligament which is going to span between several of the carpals. Now looking at this picture right here, this thick piece of connective tissue where I'm going over with my mouse, this is the transverse carpal ligament. Now some sources will say that this is identical to the flexor retinaculum, meaning they're one and the same. They're not technically one and the same. The transverse carpal ligament is a piece of the flexor retinaculum. Okay, they're very similar basically. But more specifically, this is the transverse carpal ligament. And there's two components of it. There's a radial part and an ulnar part. And given that the radius is the lateral bone on the thumb side, you could say over here is the radial part of the transverse carpal ligament. And then closer to the pinky over here on the ulnar side, this is the ulnar half of the transverse carpal ligament. Um, when we look at the radial half, it's going to have attachments on the tubercle of the trapezium and the scaphoid. So over here we have the trapezium. This is the carpal on the lateral side or the thumb side in the distal row, whereas the scaphoid is in the proximal row. Okay, We don't see the scaphoid right here, but we do see this tubercle sticking off of that trapezium, and you can see that, that there is an attachment for the transverse carpal ligament on that side. Over here on the ulnar side, um, here's the pisiform. The pisiform is in the proximal row, okay, and you can see that the transverse carpal ligament on this side has an attachment there as well on the pisiform. And down here's the hamate. Again, just because of where we're taking the cross section, we can't see it, but the transverse carpal ligament will also have an attachment on the hamate. The hamate's just a little bit more distal. It's in the distal row, and there's a hook that comes off of it that we can't see here, and that ulnar uh, part of the transverse carpal ligament will have an attachment on that. And again, the radial part runs towards the ulnar part, and they form this entire ligament, which again forms the roof of the carpal tunnel. So these bones right here that are the carpals, they form what's called a carpal arch. Okay, That's the floor, the carpal arch, and the roof is made up by this transverse carpal ligament, and that ligament converts the arch into a tunnel, Okay, a tunnel that contains all these structures within it. Okay. Now before we get into those contents, let's talk about some other functions of that transverse carpal ligament. Uh, number one, uh, the transverse carpal ligament as part of the flexor retinaculum forms attachments for the thenar muscles and hypothenar muscles. So again, if you haven't studied those, those are intrinsic muscles of the hand. Um, if you look at your thumb, on the palmar side there's a large bump, um, a large eminence, that's the thenar eminence, and there's three muscles in there that's called the thenar muscles. And on your pinky side, also on the palmar aspect, there's another bump, not as big as the thenar eminence, that's the hypothenar eminence, and there's three hypothenar muscles. And those muscles are going to partially originate off of the flexor retinaculum, uh, in particular that transverse carpal ligament. In fact, right here you can actually see some of those thenar muscles on the thumb side, and you can actually see that they do have some attachments on that ligament right there. Also, the transverse carpal ligament helps to maintain the transverse carpal arch. We'll talk about the hand arches in later videos. And it also is going to act as a restraint for bowstringing of the flexor tendons. Again, within this carpal tunnel, we have many flexor tendons. And by having this uh, ligament go over them, it prevents them from bulging out whenever we go into wrist flexion. Okay, now for the contents of the carpal tunnel. They're all shown right here. The first two right here kind of go well together. Those are the tendons of flexor digitorum profundus and flexor digitorum superficialis. Okay, so if you look right here, uh, these four that are kind of in this lightish blue color almost, maybe a light gray, 
These right here, as you can see, are the tendons of flexor digitorum superficialis. Understand these are all tendons, not the actual muscle bellies. Those are up in the forearm. These are just the tendons. Um, and so then beneath those, you see the tendons of flexor digitorum profundus, maybe in sort of this light skin color almost. Okay. Um, it's important to understand that the flexor digitorum superficialis tendons are just that. They are superficial. Uh, and the profundus ones are deep to them. But collectively, um, there is one tendon that goes to each of the digits two through five for each of those muscles. So there's four tendons for flexor digitorum superficialis and four for flexor digitorum profundus, making a total of eight. And you can count those tendons. There's eight total right there. Okay. Now, a little bit closer to the thumb side, we have the median nerve here in yellow. So the only nerve that actually travels in the carpal tunnel is the median nerve. Up here, you have the ulnar nerve. Okay, that's this yellow structure right here. And then not shown over on the thumb side, um, actually a little bit more dorsally right here, you'd probably have the superficial radial nerve. Okay, the median nerve is the only one to go through the carpal tunnel. And then even more lateral to that right here is the tendon of flexor pollicis longus. Flexor pollicis longus, again, one of the deep muscles of the anterior forearm, sends its tendon through here and then it ultimately goes to the thumb and it'll allow flexion of the thumb. Now, you see this structure right here. This one is actually embedded within a thickening of the transverse carpal ligament um, right next to that uh, tubercle of the trapezium. This is the tendon of flexor carpi radialis. So flexor carpi radialis is not actually within the carpal tunnel proper. So that's not an actual term you'll usually see, carpal tunnel proper. Um, the carpal tunnel proper, what I'm referring to, is actually this space here that's underneath the transverse carpal ligament. There's a separate space here within the ligament that's not the actual carpal tunnel proper, but it's a separate space that's solely for the tendon of flexor carpi radialis. So it's in a separate compartment. Uh, one of my instructors used to call it the presidential compartment. It gets its own first class compartment. Uh, if you think about it, we had a president in the United States at one point, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, or FDR as he's often known. So FDR, president. So FCR, presidential compartment. So FCR, flexor carpi radialis, travels in that presidential compartment, first class. All right. And so sometimes you will not see flexor carpi radialis listed within the contents here. So I just wanted to make that perfectly clear. But one through four right here, these are all within that carpal tunnel proper. Uh, now a couple other things I want to mention here. If you look directly superficial to that flexor retinaculum, or this part which is the transverse carpal ligament, you'll see actually the tendon here of palmaris longus. That's not within the carpal tunnel. That's actually superficial to the transverse carpal ligament. Uh, and then also you'll see uh, down here on the dorsal side of the wrist, you'll see a bunch of tendons down here. Um, these tendons, and including these over here, are actually coming from the posterior forearm, and they're going to make up um, different extensor zones. And we'll talk about those in the next video. Okay? So hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of the anatomy of the carpal tunnel and the transverse carpal ligament and what we find within the carpal tunnel. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.